Um, as I said, my name's Kyle. I'm one of the system administrators here. I'm the person that doesn't mind getting up in front of people and talking, so I actually enjoy this part of things. So, man, that thing is still loud. Well, yeah, <laughs> I'm really rare among computer guys in that I like actually people and talking to things. Turn this down just a little more. That is. If I turn the whole thing down, that's. I think I'm turning down the wrong thing here. Yeah. Volume. Test, test. That's too far. How about that? That sounds a little better. I'm not getting any feedback there. All right. So we're going to be talking, first of all, I got my notes on my phone, um, about uh, Linux itself. Uh, Linux itself is an operating system. Operating systems are what we use uh, most of you guys probably are familiar with Mac OS 10 or Windows. It's a way of allowing the, it's an interface between the user and the, and the computer itself. Okay? You don't want to have to write things like in the bad old days of technology back in the 70s of, I need to know how to talk to this disk and how to talk to this disk and how to talk to this disk and how to talk to this network card and that kind of thing. So Linux is an operating system, which means it is just, the, the piece that makes that all easy for you guys to use. Easy being a relative term. Um, the one thing you'll notice about Linux, at least in our iteration of it, it is at its core command line. So that throws a lot of people off, in, in the, especially as they're getting started. They tend to like, uh, you, you're used to Windows. You click on this, you click on that, and everything works. Not so much with the way we have this set up. There are graphic front ends to Linux. Uh, those really slow down a supercomputer. So that's why we don't use those. Instead, we use an interface called SSH. Now, SSH is a protocol. It's a protocol is, you know, how you, how you talk from one system to another. But there are several different implementations of that. And probably the most common ones you're going to see here are ones that I have just now installed on this machine. So I'm going to Pull up my downloads folder here. Anybody here used PuTTY before? Okay, so that means you guys are probably are going to be bored, just so you know, because we're, like I said, this is going to be pretty basic. Um, PuTTY is probably the most common uh, interface that we have from Windows. Uh, OS X has it built in by default. You just use the SSH command. But I'm going to just pull this up here and show you what uh, we have here for PuTTY. So, when you first pull up PuTTY, it's asking where you're wanting to connect to, and that's all you're really going to need to start off with. So the name we're going to use here is headnode.bayocat.ksu.edu. And I say open. The very first time you run this, you're going to get this. This is the only time you'll ever get is the first time you do this unless something goes horribly wrong. So say yes, go ahead and do that. I'm talking to who I know I'm talking to. And log in as. Here I'm going to put in my username. This is my EID. And password. And you get this nice little splash screen that says Bayocat uh, gives all our warnings there of, you know, we don't want to use HIPAA data, anything classified, anything like that. We don't keep the strict security controls on that. So um, I am going to, you can go change settings here, and I'm going to make this bigger. I think there's a... I'm sorry, what's the address for adjustation? H-E-A-D-N-O-D-E, -E, head node. There we are. Now it's big enough you can see everything there. So um, I'm going to – one thing you notice, like I said, is there's no point-and-click mouse. Everything you're doing with your mouse here is on, on your own machine. You're not communicating anything with Beocat by with the mouse. So I can't drag and drop files. I can't uh, – you know, every, every, I can't change my position on the screen, anything like that, with the mouse. That's all done with 
keyboards. So you're going to have to get used to doing lots of stuff with keyboards. And I'm just, there are, I could spend like a semester up here talking about how to use Linux. So we're going to go over the real, real, real basics. Um, first of all is seeing what files we have here. Creating and navigating directory is what I put on my thing here. Good. So uh, the, the basic command for seeing what's in a directory, uh, a directory is what we on Linux call a folder in Windows or OS X. Uh, it's a name that's been around forever. So when I say a directory, that's what I'm talking about. So that, you got to make that kind of mental transition. Is, is, it's, it's a folder. So if I want to see, when, when I first get dropped into uh, Linux, you'll see I have this little tilde sign, little squiggle. That tells me I'm in my home directory, which is where you'll be when you first log in. The basic command to see what's in there is ls. Now, if you first logged in for the first time, this will show up with nothing in it. But as you can see, I have lots of files out there. Uh, output files, different uh, uh, things that I've used installing software for other people. Some, uh, I think I even have a couple of documents in here that I've created, that kind of thing that I've just saved on Bayocat. But you can see that that kind of is hard to, to uh, to see the whole screen, um, and it doesn't give you a whole lot of information. Now, these are color-coded, so like, for instance, the blue stuff is uh, our directories. Green stuff is executable. Uh, purple, what is the purple? Images, Images yeah. So it, it, it color-codes stuff for you, so it kind of gives you some, some idea of what's out there, but you can see that there's uh, a lot of... Uh, I got a whole bunch of stuff in one spot that makes it kind of hard to manage. Um, what we can do is you create you can create a directory and you can and you can go put files and folders in there. I'm going to show you the easy way to do that from another machine here in a bit. But you got to have some basic working understanding of how this works before we're going to be able to do much with Bayocat. So uh, I'm going to pick a directory here, Bayocat intro. So to change to my directory, I'm going to say cd for change directory. A uh, little history here, Linux is built on Unix, which came from the 1960s, so everything was very precious. Memory space was precious, typing was very precious, so everything got compressed to be really short, short commands, especially for the older stuff. The stuff that's been around forever, like directories. So they don't say change directory, it's CD. Because that way, when you were on your 100 baud modem, that you could type that really fast and you would get results back faster. So, so I say cd space uh, bayocat intro. And now when I do my ls, should be significantly fewer fires that fi files there. These are some things I used from, my, uh, from the previous class that we did here. And you can see now I just have a few uh, short files there. Uh, one of them here... I'll even point you to later. This is my sample Q sub that uh, when when you go to submit files, that you guys that, that's open to the world. You guys can go copy that and modify it to your own means. Um, what you can see too is uh, they have command line switches. What a command line switch is, it, it modifies the command. So I'm going to give you an example. Now that we do have a lot of this stuff on. The, there is a Linux basics page on our wiki. So most of this information is there, and I'll bring that up here in a little minute too. So by saying dash L means make a long form. So ls is, direct, is, is listing in your directory. ls dash L is the long form. And this tells me other in, 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 interesting information here. These are the dates that it changed, the file name, the size of the file in this column. This is the user and group. By default, everything you're going to, your name is going, everything that you create is going to be under your name. This is your EID, and your group is your name with underscore users. We have a few groups set up on campus that we might, ch might change that, but we have user and the group. The other thing you see over here is something we're going to get into a little bit. It's, it's on permissions. This is where we see especially new users get hung up a lot, is on permissions. Permissions, what this is, is this, every one of these columns has a spot for R, W, and X, and it's three times, so R, W, X, R, W, X, R, W, X, and that tells you what permissions has for 
the user, read, write, and execute. This first column tells you whether you, as, as the owner of the file, have read, write, or execute permissions. The second column tells you whether your group has read, write, or execute. So the Kyle Hudson users group, which happens to include me, so in this case, not going to make a whole lot of difference. And this one is the entire world. So everybody that's not in my group gets this. So uh, like this Q, Q sub file over here, you can execute that yourself. If I don't want to, it's not very useful in its current form. But you can go in here and you could read this file and execute it yourself because even though it's my file, I've set the rest of the world to give execute permissions on that. Um, other things you can do, uh, I'm going to sort, is it L? Yeah, sort by capital L, capital S. Sort it by size. Sometimes you want to see the biggest file. Sometimes you want to see the smallest file. Uh, LT, sorts by date. So that now, now it has the newest at the bottom and the oldest at the, newest at the top, boldest at the bottom. I can reverse the order, LRT. I use this one all the time because I usually, I usually want to see the last few files that I've edited. And that would show me that the last thing I had in this folder was September 2014. So to change directories, again, back out of here, you always have the option of going back to your home directory by just doing CD, change directory, and enter without anything behind it. That will get you back to your, your home directory, back to where you, 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 your, your, own, your own home where you very first get started. If you need to go to somebody else's stuff, I'm going to, Adam, do you have a uh, directory that's open to the world? I can, okay. Going to somebody else's stuff, that, that same tilde that we see over here, this, the, I, I like, most people call it a squiggle. The tilde is the official name for it. You can say and this with the other person's name. So tilde, his uh, directory is Moses. So that will change to his directory. And now I'm looking at his stuff. And this will show what I can see out of his stuff. And like I say, he has a folder there called temp. So change the directory to temp from here. That will go down. So now I'm in his directory, Moses, slash temp. And again, to get back to my own, CD, enter. And now I'm back to my own home directory again. Now, I've kind of showed you the hard way because there's going to be times that you need to have that information on how to do this from within Beocat. Transferring files in and out is probably the easiest way of making directories and folders and everything else. And we have a couple of programs that will do that. I'm going to fire up here a program called MOBA Xterm. That's M-O-B-A-X-T-E-R-M. And it is a slick little program. This is for Windows only. Uh, for OS X, uh, I suggest using, and, and Linux and Windows, all three have FileZilla. It's very similar, and I have it here in case we have time, I can show you that one too. This is, this is my new favorite if when I'm on Windows. I actually have my, my normal desktop is a Mac. So I, I, just, I transfer files in by command line myself. Once you get advanced enough that you're thinking in terms of how the command line works, that's probably what you're going to do. But for graphics purposes, uh, FileZilla works on Mac. And uh, MOBA Xterm is the one I recommend on Windows, even though FileZilla will do Linux, Mac, and Windows too. What this will do, it'll actually import your PuTTY sessions too. So if you've already got PuTTY, it'll uh, automatically import what you have. I'm going to quick connect up here to headnode.beocat.ksu.edu, just like I did before in PuTTY. And it's an SSH session. And again, it's going to ask me for my username and my password. It asks me if I want to save my password. And then it'll ask me for another thing. It says for SSH browser password. This is for transferring files in and out. You put the same password in again. And again, if you have it saved, 
I'm not going to do this on this machine because this isn't my machine and I don't want them saving my password. But if you do this on your own machine where you're familiar, where, you, where you're comfortable with this, you can have it save your password and then you have to do all this part every time. Put my password in there again. And no, I don't want to save it. And now you can see it's, it's exactly the same as we had with Buddy as far as how this looks. What you see over here to the side, though, is you see the, the effective, what, everything I had there from my LS, all these files and folders that I have over here. So what that lets me do, then, is I can drag and drop, I can download files, I can take this file, that's kind of big one, let's take a small one, there, that one. I right click and say download, and that'll just move it to my own machine. You can also do really cool things like, if you have a, uh, let me quit this presentation here. I have here my downloads folder that I just, uh, on, on my Windows machine. So this is my Windows machine. This is MOBA X term. I can take like this putty file and just drop it, drag and drop it over there. And it'll let me do that. And I can even take entire folders and drop it over. It'll create the whole folder structure and everything on the other side. That is probably the easiest way of getting files in and out. So let's pick something here. Let's see if they have any. Like I said, it's not even my computer, so I'm going to play with something. Uh, here, I'm, I'm just going to create a folder here. New. This is on my Windows desktop here. Folder called Kyle Stuff. And I'm going to take the files that I downloaded here today. Do, 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 do. I'm going to copy them into Kyle's stuff. Now I'm going to take that Kyle stuff folder and copy it over there. Shouldn't take too very long. You can see a little progress bar down here. It's 26% done here now. While it's doing that, though, I can show you that I can say CD space Kyle stuff. And we can see the folders that are there now on the other side. And how can you fold the same What's that? It's difficult to import the files using the code, the command line. How to import the files themselves? These will be usually now like executable files and it won't run on Linux from Windows. Is that is that what you're asking? No, no. Uh, if if you want to import a file, how do you do import what kind of file? I guess I'm. Let's. I don't know that. Any file by using the command line. Oh, during the using the command line. Um, I don't have a SSH client that'll do that. Downloaded here. Yeah, I do. I can I can get it though real quick. Just a second here. I don't have anything that uses. Tell you what I'll do. I can go back to my own desktop here. Just a second here. Go back to MobX term. This is my desktop. Cancel, I'm not about transfer files. Okay, this is actually from my Mac. So this is the command line that I have from the Mac. And I can do. Uh, SCP space, uh, I just saw, dang it, a file there called synergy.conf. So syn synergy.conf. And I'm going to copy it to Baocat. So this is how I do it. I say headnode.baocat.ksu.edu colon. And the colon says that means it's a foreign file system. So I'm going to copy it over there. Yes, go ahead and connect. And it copies. I already had the password 
saved on my on my desktop. So that's why it didn't ask me for the password there. Normally it asks for the password and it'll just copy files over. Where'd my other session go here? Things appears to have gotten stuck at that 26%. That's unusual. And right now I'm going to go back and I'm going to remove. To remove a command, it's RM. Again, they try to be very compact on space, so RM is, is, uh, is to remove a file. And it also, did you notice that when I'm typing, I type the first two or three letters, and then the rest of it shows up? That's because I'm using what's called tab, line, tab completion. So I type in the first couple of letters here, like I just created that file, synergy.conf. I want to remove it, so I do rm, and I type the first, let's do s, for instance, just the first letter to see what happens here. I hit tab, and nothing happens. I hit tab again, and it shows all of the files that start with s right there. So I can see that there's the one I'm looking for. So if I hit sy, is there anything with sy in there? No, as soon as I hit tab, it'll complete that. It knows what the files are already. So that at least when there's lots of typing, they make it a lot easier. And that, especially if you have things with, with, with spaces in them, you notice that I have Kyle's stuff as a, has a space in it. Generally, command, you don't like files with spaces in them because they're hard to get to when, on a command line. Because if you look at how a space means some, something, you know, going from... I'm, I'm listing two different files. If I just said Kyle's stuff, it'd think a directory called files and a directory called stuff, and that's not what we want. So I'm going to cd Kyle's stuff, and you'll see that it says, oh, I need to put a little backslash before, below the tick mark. I need to put a backslash below this, before the space. So that command line completion is really good for that kind of thing. And good, we're getting close on time, and I'm getting close to being done with the first part here. Ownership and permissions. This is, again, where we see the biggest uh, issue with, uh, with, with new users in particular, of not being able to uh, get what they think they should have. When you transfer stuff from Windows, they come, or then I think this is pretty universal, unless you have uh, certain things set up, that... You, they'll come in with these kind of permissions, with read, write for yourself, and read for everybody else. A lot of people don't want to do that. We do have a section on our website that talks about how to do this, and I'm not going to go over it because, quite frankly, it's going to be boring to watch somebody do this. But I have on support.bayocat.ksu.edu. This is our support pages. I'm going to show you this right off the bat here because we have, where is Linux Basics? This is also a wiki. It lo if you log in with your EID, username, and password, you can go in here and add stuff to this if you think it's going to help anybody else. So we encourage you to do that. Please do. We want to make this as useful as possible to as many people as possible. So if you see areas here that I didn't cover that you said, wow, that would really be useful for me to know, please go in and change it. At least send us an email to tell us change it. We're trying to make this useful, and we want you guys to be comfortable with the, with the tools we got here. So this is kind of going over the stuff we have, logging in for the first time, what you need to do, uh, transferring files. We give some command line examples here, too. and basic Linux commands, as well as ownership and permissions. A, a quick cheat sheet of some of the most common uh, things you'll need to use on the Linux side of things. The reason you're going to need to know this is because when you go to submit your jobs, if you have it in a folder already, you need to be able to get to that folder to begin with. So that's an important thing to know. And how to edit... Uh, Text files. Um, one of the more other things that new people get stuck with is editing text files. 
I mean, there are a couple of, uh, for, for brand new people, we suggest using Nano. So I'm going to put in, it, Nano is a, is a program that's just a plain text editor. So Nano, I have, whatever I'm working on last, this is just me. I use a, a file called temp.txt if I'm not going to be using it for anything. So this is something I, looks like I did a directory listing for something for some reason. Who knows? So from this, it's basically like using Notepad on Windows. Yes? I already did that once. Let me make it bigger yet. Oh, I didn't do it here. Increase font size. Control mouse wheel up. Check it out. I can make it lots bigger. Okay. But, again, unlike Windows, remember, this is not mouse. If I, co if I copy this and hit the backspace key, nothing's going to happen because it, the mouse has nothing to do with what you're seeing on the other side. So, yeah, we have a, the cursor up here that's a, on, the, on the first line here. And I can use that to backspace over files and create blah. Create, create more text in here, changing what's there. When I go to quit, these down here, the little caret means control. So if I want to quit this, I control X. And it'll say, do you want to save it? Yes. File name, by default, it's going to keep the same name, or you can change it to this point. And, and now I've edited that file. I encourage you, if you're going to be using Linux more than just casually, to learn VI. VI has a learning curve that looks that approximates a wall. It is very, very difficult to first get started. Once you first get started, once you get your first half hour in, it's, it's good. That first half hour is a pain in the rear. It's a headache. But it'll also let you do really slick things, like I want to delete these next two lines and paste them at the end, things like that, that, all with command line. Stuff that you would normally do, like, say, with a mouse and copy and paste and those kinds of things, and lots of other things besides. You can, I can replace every instance of the 2015 with 2017, you know, through the whole file, doing quick searches, replaces, things like that. So it's very powerful for text editor. If you're doing all your editing on Windows and transferring in and out, you don't need to do that. But if you're going to spend any time on the Linux command line doing file editing, highly suggest you learn VI. There are tutorials out there that are quite comprehensive on this, but I will forewarn you that the first time you get in it, you're going to say, okay, I'm, this is great, I'm in here now. How do I do anything and how do I get out? Because it's a pain in the rear. So make sure you have a tutorial already pulled up before you ever start it. All right, that covers really the basics. And like I said, I, I knew, I, I, I forewarned you that if you had any experience with Linux, that was going to be way too basic for you. So questions, comments, snide remarks at this point? Is everybody awake still? <laughs> okay. Huh? Half of them died. Died of boredom, probably. Mm -hmm. What would you recommend as a source of information? So we can use your uh, site to check some basic Linux commands. Oh, yeah, uh, support. Yeah, what else? Support.bayocat.ksu.edu. Uh -huh. that, that will get you to our support wiki, and we link to some other external documents from there. Uh, what else do you need? It tells you how to get a hold of us uh -huh. on top of that. What, what else do you, are you looking for there? Just some basics. So Just for basics? So I can find it. Your yes, yes. And, and we have pretty much everything we have going to our support wiki. We don't have a whole lot of information out there outside of our support wiki. So that's really where we keep, that's what we keep updated and, and where we keep useful information. And like I said, we encourage, there are sections that are locked that you can't change it. You can't go in and say, change how many nodes that we have and that kind of thing. But, you know, for, especially for things that are useful for people learning how to do stuff, those are the kind of things that, you know, I've been using. Linux since 1994, so I forget what it was like 20 years ago you know, when I was doing these kind of things. So I'm, I'm really trying to make this so you guys can can help each other out as much as we can help you out. I mean, I'm, we're all more than happy to 
you know, to do some hand-holding and help, and help you get started. But it's a matter of getting to that point, you know, the, of, of uh, having us, be, having you be able to ask good questions of us and having good support resources out there so that you don't have to for, for silly things. Fair enough? Other questions? Okay, we're going to move on.